So early on in shooting, we introduced this one, two, through concept. So it's very methodical. Some will say it's like robotic, but a one, push, two, and then we attach under through. And so it's through this one, two, through that if you look at it face value, you say, well, it's, it's very choppy. But what happens is as we start to go one, two, through, we start to get more and more aware of how the ball is moving. The more aware we become of this sequence, the more we can start to move through it without even almost seeing the one, two, through anymore, or the one, two, three, however you want to say it. So it's this concept of numbers to leave numbers. So in the beginning stages, it's very routine. One, two, through. It's very routine with what we're doing till we eventually get to the point where we can leave the numbers. Right? So the numbers are there to be our guide to eventually get to the point where it just becomes habit in terms of how we start to move things fluidly through. Okay? So this idea that we're always creating smaller circles, big shout out to Josh Waitzkin, and that as we start to learn to move through these, we can then become who we are and then move through it without having to think about the one, two, three anymore. We leave it and then we become ourselves. We can apply this same idea to how we prepare off of the dribble. So the same way we, we have numbers to leave numbers for the shot, you could almost have numbers to leave numbers off of the dribble as well. So in the beginning stages, I teach early hands because the biggest problem I see, especially with younger players, is that their ability to sequence gets disrupted as soon as we start to get more dynamic. So early on, if I put a player stationary, very easy for them, one, two, through, even to start to smooth that out. But as we start to add movement, even if I have them hop forward, what tends to happen is the body wants to get sped up and everything gets all out of whack. So what we do is we start to put the ball in our hands from start to finish in terms of when the actual shot is happening off the dribble. So let's just say I'm going to go dribble drop shot just to give you an example. I would go right hand dribble left foot step and I'm going to pick the ball up here because now I've established connection with that basketball so that when I make my drop into the shot I'm in this position which is the exact same starting position as my one two through and I can move that ball first and fast through my shot. Okay? What happens when I leave that up to chance in the beginning is that if I go late and I time everything out together, this is what tends to happen. The body wants to come up, right? And we haven't ingrained that sequencing yet to the point that we can actually have later hands at this point in time. So what we do is early on, we just get used to moving with the basketball. Early hands, drop, feet hit the ground, ball moves, and then we're at our sequence. And what happens is, as you start to do that more and more, start to be aware of where that ball's placed, where your hands are, really starting to be aware of the preparation that you're, that you're building, you can then leave that as well, right? And that's going to have to happen. So in the beginning, maybe we teach a one-two pull-up with this hand really moving in front. I establish contact here, second foot hits, and now I'm up through my shot. And that's going to ensure my sequence. But once that sequence becomes so ingrained, I can hold off on that pickup later because I know that my levels and my sequence is now disciplined enough to keep me down before that ball goes up. So if I were to have some type of dribble, maybe let's say it's outside my body here on a hesitation, my butt drops and stays dropped up until I get to now this point and then I come up. So what it, what it is, is, it's just a way to hold you accountable for the correct sequencing until sequencing becomes second nature to you no matter the movement that's involved.